what we are witnessing here <clears throat> is a ghost shrimp that has been attacked and is being eaten alive by uh, multiple planaria that have infested the tank. If you look closely inside of her body, you'll see worms uh, squiggling around through her flesh. And it's kind of hard to get a very good picture here. But you can see on the left side near her spine, one planaria is moving its way through the body. Now, planaria uh, are very unsightly, and the problem with planaria is most people don't realize that they are very deadly to shrimp. Uh, what happens is, as they move, they release a kind of ooze, kind of like snails do. However, the ooze that uh, planaria release contain uh, tetrodotoxin, which is a type of neurotoxin, and the neurotoxin will effectively stun the shrimp uh, to the point where the shrimp can no longer move. At that point, the shrimp ends up being devoured uh, by the planaria. And as you can see, there's multiple planaria uh, squirming all over her body. Now, this shrimp was healthy and was moving around just a few hours ago. However, she was unfortunate enough to be the one caught up in an area where there was a lot of tetrodotoxin buildup. And it must have stunned her enough to where the planaria could gang up on her. Uh, unfortunately, this is actually a common kind of parasite, I guess. Well, it's, I don't know if I, it's technically a parasite, but it's definitely uh, it's not desirable to have in any tank. There is uh, something you can do to get rid of them. It's a medication from, and I'm going to butcher the name here, Gretchen, I think it, I think it's pronounced, I could be wrong. Um, it, it's called noplanaria. It can, it's, uh, a form of beetle nut extract, I believe, and it's it's harmful to fresh. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not harmful to freshwater shrimp, but it will kill the planaria, and it will kill a number of types of snails that are sensitive to water changes, like nearite snails. But would leave snails like uh, bladders and Malaysian trumpets alone. It won't it won't affect them. This tank has not been dosed with no planaria as it can be hard to notice the planaria as they tend to hide when the lights come on and uh, depending on situation they can be white or they can be dark like that one coming out of her body right there that one's a bit dark um, the ones I've dealt with in the past have a very white body and it's very weird that I'm um, getting ones here that have a contrasting color to the substrate. As you can see, there's a bunch of other baby ghost shrimp that are just fine. And that's because the water quality is not bad. Um, but planaria can pop up from overfeeding uh, because whatever the shrimp don't eat, if you have a shrimp tank, the snails will then try to get at it. And if the snails don't get at it, then the planaria will get at it. So there's kind of uh, a trickle down of uh, who ends up getting the food. And if the planaria end up getting the food, uh, then they tend to reproduce pretty heavily. And that's when they become a problem. I mean, there's one squirming away right there. And as you can see, it just hid under the sand and yeah, that's why these guys can be kind of hard to spot if you're not really looking for them they're uh, they can be flat and 
There's a few of them in this tank. This tank will need to be do dosed with Melplanaria for a few days in order to kill all of these little buggers. As for Mama Shrimp here, who is the mother to all the, sh all the baby shrimp in this tank, it's too late for her. The tetrodotoxin is, is too far in her system. She may actually still be alive, which is the sad thing. Uh, every once in a while she'll get just enough energy to move a swimmerette or a part of one of her appendages. But uh, at this point she's lost pretty much all her energy and ability to want to fight this any longer. So uh, as it stands, Mama Shrimp here uh, is going to pass away from this. But I can save all the other shrimp in this tank by just medicating properly. So, I wanted to document this because it's very important. Uh, there's not a lot of good documentation on the internet about this particular issue. Now, Mama Shrimp is going to pass away and I'll probably end up removing her immediately from the tank after this video but I'm using this opportunity to uh, warn everyone else about planaria and try and help you guys find a way to deal with it in your own cases so there's no fish in this tank uh, if there was, the planaria might not show up because there are some fish that will eat the planaria, but uh, not many that I know of that are successful, and I don't know of any in particular that are known for their planaria eating habits. So you can see that's a pretty sizable one. That one's gotten very big, so he's been around for a while. They start out very, very small, to the point where you would need a magnifying glass to really see them. And uh, eventually they'll get to that size, and once they're at full size, and if there's enough of them, that, uh, that neurotoxin just becomes uh, a real nuisance everywhere. So... Uh, trying to see if there's anything else I can think of the document before I remove her and start dosing. Um, Planaria seem to thrive in even the worst water conditions but can appear uh, in even the best water conditions. So Planaria just don't care about the water conditions. They will pop up whenever they can. Where they come from exactly, if you start with a fresh tank and you add a shrimp and they're suddenly there, that's what puzzles a lot of people because unlike a snail, it's not really known you know, how they get in there because snails can hitchhike on a plant or something like that. and you know That's how they get in, but planaria uh, can be a bit more mysterious. I don't know exactly how they find their way into a tank, but once they're there, they're very hard to get rid of. Some people will dose uh, fenbendozole. I'm probably butchering that name too. Which is a type of dewormer used for dogs. And uh, it's a solid pill. And they would uh, crush it up as best they can and put it in the water. And let it dissolve, which will take a very long time to. Because it's not meant to be you know, water soluble. Uh... It's, it's kind of an extreme way of going about it. It does work from what I've read, but you got to be very careful. I would highly recommend the no planaria. I have multiple shrimp tanks that I've been working with for months now. Uh, I've used no planaria in other tanks, and it's gotten rid of the issue very well with no harm to my shrimp. This tank uh, is a holdover tank. Uh, for random creatures that accidentally spawn when I didn't want them to. 
uh, like the ghost shrimp. Um, or they just couldn't be placed in any of my other tanks at the moment. And unfortunately, this tank uh, got planaria, and I wasn't able to see it in time because I had been very sick myself for the past week or two. So I didn't catch it in time, and that's why Mama Shrimp here is, uh, I think at this point, probably passed away. But yes, they uh, they'll 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 uh, cover the ground in tetrodotoxin, and uh, it it'll definitely affect newly molted shrimp much faster. And once the shrimp gets stunned, they'll crawl all over the body, and stun the shrimp even further with more of the toxin. And it is a neurotoxin, so it prevents them from moving. And then once the shrimp is you know prevented from moving completely. They'll eat their way into the shrimp and eat them alive. So it's a pretty brutal world for shrimp sometimes. But uh, good thing is there are solutions. I'm just really sad that I was not able to get to them as quickly as I should have. But I really hope this video would help, guys. Um, if you found this at all helpful... Please give it a thumbs up, share it, let other people know, because a lot of people just say planaria is harmless and unsightly, but it really, really isn't. It is deadly. This is how, and this is why.